Kyrie Irving is one of those players who's like an artist. A lot of what he does, it's hard for you to kind of realize why he does it until you really break it down. But even then, sometimes it's hard to understand. And probably because we've never seen a player like this before, we've never really seen a player who's so fluid it makes difficult things look so easy. But I'm gonna do my best to break down his entire game. I've already done videos on his finishing, on his handles, and more, but hopefully this is a pretty good compilation of a bunch of things that make Kyrie, Kyrie. So let's start with his handles. Fundamentally, when you look at Kyrie's ball control under the microscope, a lot of it is because of how he's able to manipulate the ball in incredible ways. Not just your standard cuff dribbles and pocket dribbles, but truly next level ways. Whether it's letting the ball really float in his hand, switching sides of the ball, or really pulling the ball outside of his frame, it just opens up so many more possibilities for him. And even just being able to float the ball comfortably opens up a lot. As well, you don't have to dribble. You can have control of the ball. It's in your hand. So during this time, obviously you're not carrying it, but you can move however you'd like to. So like right here, he's literally setting up a crossover and changing speeds while the ball comfortably just spins or floats in his hand. Plus this overall ball control helps him retain full possession of the ball even when it seems like he's losing it or honestly use it to his advantage as defenders step in or fall asleep and he goes straight by. It's honestly crazy how much it happens and it turns into a highlight and it's a testament to his ability to adapt to any situation and be confident even when he loses it for a quick second. Another concept to notice is his unbelievable timing with the ball. This shows up in a variety of ways, like releasing this ball and then quickly speeding it up or regaining the dribble at the perfect time, throwing off his timing in stride. So in other words, it's not like all of his dribbles are the same tempo, but you'll notice many of these quick switch ups in timing, where it's not one, two, three, but maybe one, two, three to throw defenders off. Or here to take an extra quick dribble and protect the ball. And then lastly, exploding when the ball is on the way down or the way up, which is honestly a secret tool to throw defenders off. Plus, speaking of timing and all this stuff, we always think of speed changes as these really exaggerated shifts in pace, but he's really good at these super quick ones that take just a millisecond to relax defenders. And just as importantly, timing them up to catch defenders off guard and get them out of the play. Also, the ball control is important, of course, like we just talked about, but even more significant to notice how well he moves. When we think about which players are just great movers, Kyrie's easily up there, even when we take the ball out of the equation. So, for example, the ability to get his foot positioned in the perfect place to punch the ground backwards and get into these nice shin angles that project him forward. The mobility to hit positions like this, and not only be comfortable here, but powerful enough to explosively push, recover, and thrive in these low positions. As well as to hit these when the ball is almost pulling him into this shifty position like a magnet. Also, the ability to really relax with the ball and then speed up from these slower paces, like a car going from 0 to 100 in no time. The smoothness along these curved angles, and much more. What's so beautiful about his ball handling is that it's often so imperfect, but he makes it work. We've already covered the losing the ball component, but it goes for footwork too. Like this footwork here isn't what one would teach for a quote unquote snatchback or under drag or whatever you want to call it, but it's what works in the situation with this timing and position, even if it's not perfect. Also notice that he plays a lot with his chest down, kind of leaning forward, and doing this before he goes and gets into an acceleration position. So what this does is a couple things. First off, it makes a nice leaning acceleration position more accessible. Again, he's already slightly leaning forward, so all he's got to do is find the foot positioning to project him forward with those first few steps. And second, it allows him to protect the ball a bit more and elongate the space between the defender and the ball. It's much harder to steal the ball here than standing straight up. Notice the angles he takes too. The majority of the time, there's another human right in front of you, making it pretty damn tough to go into a straight line angle by them. But finding the angle where you can sneak right by the defender and then get in front of that inside thigh is going to be the goal. This angle will be different every time. Sometimes they'll completely take it away and you'll have to turn back. Sometimes they'll feel that you're about to get by and take a big jump, opening up this. And sometimes you'll just need to be relentless and take a couple different attempts at it like right here. 
Knowing which one to do comes with experience in these situations, and it happens so quickly that you don't even think about it most times. And the last thing to understand is that although Kyrie is known for having a super deep bag and making these tough plays, he doesn't do much that's not out of necessity. He's not dribbling just to dribble. He's doing it to solve whatever problem the defense throws at him. Like here, he takes a few moves, but in reality, these first two were probing that downhill attack. And then he makes one more to get the ball into his right hand and make that pass. So it's really just that usually he has a crazy creative solution for these problems. Sometimes even stuff he's probably never done before. Why? Well, I'd guess that he's just experimented a lot, tried a lot of stuff out, and never put a limit on himself with the ball. And I know almost for sure that he's not thinking about each move, but just letting his instincts take over with the main goal of creating separation from his defender and getting into space. Just wanted to make sure that's understood. So the first thing to understand about Kyrie's shooting is that he's a truly adaptable shooter. He's just a pure shot maker. And it's not just from three, but the turnarounds in the post, the hanging shots as he's driving, taking an angle away from the rim, the short turning jumpers. He breaks a lot of the traditional feet squared, one, two footwork, perfect balance cues, which can seem like he's using a suboptimal technique, but to me, it's just being ready for what the game gives him. This will take him straying away a bit from the norm technique wise. And I'm not saying he's trying to shoot with these crazy techniques because when he can get on balance and jump straight up and down, use a sharper footwork, etc., he's amazing at it. But he's also prepared for when he can't. And that's what truly makes a great shot maker and shooter. So on this note, he's great at adjusting his set point based on the distance he's shooting from. If he's pulling a mid-range jumper, for example, he's naturally gonna use a higher set point to control his momentum and shoot over defenders. But if he's pulling a bomb like right here, he's basically shooting from nose height, which only makes sense. The more power you need, the more range of motion you'll give your upper body to work through. But if you limit yourself to just shooting with one idealistic form, this will never be a possibility. Also, he's able to shoot well lifting up from a forward lane like right here, which is important considering how much he plays from this lane and how much he's driving with this intense acceleration position. Subs him really shoot mid-range pull-ups at a high clip so that he can get his defender's hips turned with this lean and then comfortably lift up quickly and leave him in the dust. Or sometimes he'll even spin out of this if he doesn't have as much space, which is not easy out of such a leaning acceleration position, but looks effortless for him. And even if it's not an exaggerated lean to get them moving backwards, he uses the threat of driving to get shots off all the time. Especially coming downhill off the pick and roll, Bigs know that it's going to be tough to stop him with a head of steam, so simply by not telegraphing a jumper, taking a quick pound dribble, he's able to get them moving backwards and pop into his pull-up. Also notice that in terms of his pull-ups, they're not always forward, but rather whatever gets him into space, which could be diagonally, slightly away from the basket, doesn't matter. And equally as important as customizing the direction of his pull-up to find space, is adjusting the length of his pull-up. So that last dribble may be super short if there's a defender right there, but a big toss out if there's time. It sounds simple, but many players don't work on adjusting this. So as a shooter off the dribble, you got to prepare for all distances and all directions on pull-ups. And finally, notice the variance in timing on his pull-ups. Sometimes he'll use a big pound to quickly project him into a shot. Sometimes he'll slowly let the ball float into it. Sometimes he'll go with a little push out to quickly send the defender backwards. Sometimes it's a bit more slower of a hop that then really pops him off the ground quickly. So being comfortable with all these options allows him to choose what's best for him in each individual situation, depending on how much space and time he has, and what angle he's attacking at. Another thing to note is that he shoots contested shots very well. And while he does have a somewhat high release, since he often elevates pretty high to knock it down, to me it's more of a mental thing. He understands from experience exactly how much time he has to get the shot off. So if he knows he's not going to get blocked, there's really nothing that should bother him. Even when defenders are literally millimeters away from the ball, he's calm and visibly not rushed, which is one of the tougher psychological skills to develop as a player. And finally, I think it's important to realize that he's not just an off the dribble shooter. He's low key pretty good at finding space off the catch and making it easy on himself. And then lastly, his finishing. So one of the first things you'll notice here is that he switches hand a lot at the rim, even when it doesn't seem necessary. Like he could probably finish with the right here, but he switches to the left simply because it often helps him one, find a better angle on the finish, two, be safe by getting even more space from the defender, and three, get some momentum on the ball. And if you're damn near just as good with your left, why not take advantage of this? And this is a good example of how being really elite with your left can open up a lot, even with your strong hand, because now defenders can't send you or predict one way or the other around the rim. 
Also notice how he really puts the ball overhead a lot as he's heading into the paint for a finish. If done correctly, this is a great option because most players aren't reaching in overhead because they usually expect a player to cuff or carry that ball at their waist as they enter this area. So he can get it there and then adjust and find whatever release point is best to finish from. And number two, he's often able to create contact and bump the defender with his hands up pretty forcefully too. Because what ref is calling this? It's just not seen as often. And similarly, he'll go with that overhead pickup when getting through a small gap or a stunting defender, which honestly comes back to his crazy ball control. Without that, this can be a risky option. But with it, a high pickup can be great to throw defenders off. He'll also do these platter finishes a lot, where he'll hold the ball like a ton of platter as he enters the paint. Again, these may look cool, but there's a reason for picking it up with one hand. It frees up that other hand to be independent. So now he's able to create contact, defend off that defender's hand, or even just feel out where they are. Like here he's subtly batting down at Ibaka's arm as he picks it up with one hand. Plus it gives him the freedom to get into a normal, powerful, jumping arm swing with that opposite arm. Next he takes off off two feet more than almost any NBA player. Which gives him so many options. You don't see this as much at the NBA level simply because help defenders are rarely sitting in the paint as much. There's often more space to coast in and finish off one foot with a higher speed but Kyrie's often operating in tight spaces, so these two foot finishes allow him to be stronger and more symmetrical with his jumps, extend out easier, change directions, and slow down a bit easier as well. Plus with his acrobatic finishing ability, often comes releasing that layup on the way down. Especially not being the tallest, he's constantly using this technique to cover just a bit more ground to find an angle on the backboard, to cradle and find momentum on the finish, and more. And speaking of finding momentum on the finish, this guy's unreal with this. It's not just your standard cradles, but minor adjustments to cock his wrist, or extend out with the ball to find some momentum to make that finish more comfortable. And then finally, he's always winning the contact battle before getting into the air. So he's creating this contact on the ground. It's gonna make it tough for his defender to jump, creates just a little bit of space and backwards momentum for his defender. This makes it a lot easier, again, even if he's a little bit less athletic, less explosive than that shot blocker. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and took something from it. Obviously I can't even cover 20% of Kyrie's game, let alone all of it in one video, but I think this is a really good overview of some things that he applies, but you could also apply into your game as well. As always, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. Make sure to tap into our virtual academy, the most comprehensive training programs you'll find on the internet, as well as check our global camps to see where we're going and what we're doing around the world. Till next time.